All right, folks, here goes nothing. I'm going to attempt to sort of talk you through the pairs of functions and derivatives that come out of this matching activity we did on Desmos in class today. Okay, so where shall we begin? All right, um, let's look at the upper left. So I matched graph A with blueberry. How am I gonna see that? Couple of observations. First, this graph is uh, decreasing, decreasing, decreasing forever. That means we are looking for a derivative that's only has, only has values, only has outputs, only has points on the graph on the lower part of the x-axis, right? Um, sorry, the lower half plane underneath the x-axis, right? Negative slopes correspond to that decreasing graph. Um, I could also see that this um, graph A sort of seems to be decreasing steeply and then kind of leveling out, like maybe it's on its way to flattening out. And we see that in this red graph, blueberry, uh, that, that sort of the curve seems to be sort of approaching zero, right? It starts out more negative and gets less negative as we go. Okay, all right, let's... Let's clean that, clean that up a little bit and see if I can figure out how to move on to the next one. Ooh, it's gonna be fun. I want this one to show up on top. Yes, there we go, okay. Um, all right, so this pairing is interesting. We talked very briefly about when a function might be non-differentiable, might uh, not have the derivative defined everywhere. So I'm looking at this blue, graph, that's graph F, and I'm noticing all of these little sharp points, repeated sharp points. Those are places where the derivative can't exist because the tangent line isn't well defined, right? It's a sharp transition. We were sort of decreasing, right? You can see sort of decreasing into that point and then boom, no transition, increasing out of it. So that tells me I might be looking for a derivative graph that isn't nice and smooth and connected and continuous. I'm looking for something with some jumps in it. Um, let's see. So, so that's one way that we might think that this lemon lime graph is the right is the right thing for us. Um, we could also observe that each of these little ridges, right, is a case of increasing and then decreasing, increasing and then decreasing. Um, here, let me get a little bit more specific with my coloring, right? Increasing, that corresponds to these positive values, right? A positive slope shows up as points above the x-axis, and then decreasing on the other side, that's negative values below the x-axis, and then we see there's that repeating pattern over and over again, so we know that that matching is good. Okay. All right, what else we got? Let's take a look here at green apple and graph B. This is a fun one. Um, let's maybe start with identifying places where we think the tangent line would be horizontal, places where the slope is zero, the derivative is zero. So I see right here, shoop. Okay, I didn't really draw that as a horizontal line, but there's one spot and there's another, right? Our sort of peak and our trough, those are places where the derivative is zero. Here it looks like that occurs close to negative two and between zero and two. And I notice, oh yeah, that, that peak corresponds to an x-intercept and this trough also corresponds to an x-intercept in this red graph, green is its name, Nemo. <laughs> I'm not cracking myself up, it's fine. All right, so we can see this graph increasing and we see this is a positive derivative, right? Positive slopes, increasing function that shows up as points above the x-axis. Then we've got this stretch of decreasing. Our curve is going down, roller coaster is going down and that corresponds to these negative values, points below the x-axis. 
And then finally, we're increasing again. And in particular, we're increasing at an increasing rate, like, um, right, that curve is getting more and more steep. And so we see our derivative values going up and up and up and up. Okay, all right, what else we got here? Oops, wrong lever. Why do we even have that lever? All right, go, go, go away, go away. Okay, um, oh, fun, now I'm moving the whole thing. <gasps> Yeah, let's do that. Let's just zoom in right here. Okay, this is a fun one. And by fun, I mean a little bit hard uh, to, to process perhaps. So the first thing I notice is that this blue graph, G, sorry, uh, has a vertical asymptote. If the function's not defined, then there's no tangent line at that point. There's no way. So we would be looking for at a minimum some kind of break, maybe also some kind of asymptote in our derivative. Truthfully, that's enough to narrow it down to buttered popcorn, right? That's that's another example where we have this um, discontinuity, this break, this not connected function. Let's see, what else can we analyze? We could also look at how this these function values are going down, 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 down. And, and then they're actually going down, 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 down again. Right? So we're looking for something just like that first example. We're looking for something where the values of the derivative are negative everywhere. That means we're looking for a graph that only populates the lower half of our plane. Right? We're looking for points below the x-axis and no points above the x-axis. So that's good. Stuff's happening down here, and it's not happening up there. That well, seems positive. Okay. Let's see. What else could we observe? Well, I think it's kind of interesting to observe, okay, this is a pretty gentle slope on the far left, and here's another pretty gentle slope, right? Those would be pretty small values of the derivative. Negative, but small in magnitude. But then as we're approaching the x or sorry approaching the y axis on either side we have this this steep steep slope right we see that mirrored below right where here we have steep steep negative slopes that's larger in magnitude larger in absolute value negative numbers more negative big bigly negative numbers right way down there where our shallower slopes correspond to these smaller numbers. Now, it is kind of curious to think about the slope of the graph of the derivative, right? Those smaller numbers are also shallower slopes, and here it's steeper and it's also steeper. Intriguing. A question for another day, but intriguing nonetheless. Okay, let's clean up those, those scribbles. I feel pretty good about that. Oops. Oops, here I go, moving the whole thing again. Move that over. Let's talk about you, pomegranate and friends. What do you think? Can I successfully pick this up and move it over? Maybe. All right, there we go. All right. Um, okay, this is fun. Again and again and again, let's do that first assessment just on increasing versus decreasing. Right, so here I see kind of flat and kind of flat. So those are pretty small, right? Derivative values that are close to zero. And then I see an increase, so some positive derivatives, and in fact, a kind of mirrored increase of positive derivatives later, but in the middle, negative derivatives. Okay, so we're looking for something close to zero, positive, negative, positive, close to zero. And what do we find up here? Oh, we find close to zero, positive, negative, positive, close to zero. Interesting, right? Now, if we want to dive a little bit deeper into this, we could think about, okay, does it make sense that there's kind of this bump, right? What does that correspond to? Well, that corresponds to everything that goes on just right in that 
uh, region I just circled, right? That's a shallow slope getting steeper and getting shallower again, right? So that's small derivative getting bigger and getting smaller again. So that sort of curve in the derivative corresponds not, not exactly to the curve below, but to the steepness changing, right? Kind of shallow, getting steeper, getting shallower. We see that traced out, kind of mo made more dramatic with this up and then down in the derivative. Okay, all right, let's keep going. I believe in us. Do, 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 do. Okay, can I pick up that card and move it? <gasps> I can. Goodbye. Ooh, okay, this one's exciting. Mostly because where have we seen that before? <gasps> Did anyone notice this? That graph F and graph 2D fruity are like uh, secretly or not so secretly the same graph. What? Yeah. Okay, all right, let's see if we can make these make sense. Um,. All right, so we're gonna start with our, our blue graph again. This thing is just increasing forever, right? I don't ever see that graph curve and go down. We just have positive slopes all day. So we know we're looking for a derivative that has points above the x-axis and no points below the x-axis. So far, so good. Now let's see, what else can we see? <coughs> what else? Can we see? If I did that successfully, I just did an undo and my deleting of all of the cards came undone. I hope. I hope you never knew it happened. Except that you know now because I told you. Okay, all right. Um, right. Let's see. So we've, we're just increasing forever. Want a graph that's positive forever. Only what seems to be happening is sort of we're flat and we're flat and we're flat, right? So I must be looking for a derivative that kind of touches zero and touches zero and touches zero, right? Those flat places are places where a tangent line would be horizontal. Aha! Another promising thing. And then what do we, how would we interpret these sort of bumps, these sort of uh, loops from zero back to zero in our derivative? Well, that would correspond to a shallow slope getting steeper, getting steeper at the peak, getting more shallow again. And we sort of see this in this curve, right? It's sort of shallow and then it's climbing steeply and then it's leveling off, right? So that gentle change in slope in the original graph gets translated into this more dramatic, right? Made more explicit in the graph of the derivative. We see uh, a more dramatic change in the shape of the graph, right? Each of these zeros, each of these places that the derivative touches the x-axis just correspond to places where the graph below flattens out as a horizontal tangent. Okay, we're making progress. Slowly but surely, little by little, the camel gets into the couscous. Okay, we have here uh, a thing of beauty. So this graph, graph E, is the function y equals the absolute value of x, right? It's a function that just ditches the negative sign if a negative sign appears on an input. So analyzing this graph kind of one nice piece at a time, what do we see? We see the line y equals, uh, sorry, we see the line y equals negative x, right? A line with slope negative one, right? So this is the line y equals negative one because this slope is negative one. Okay, on the flip side, right? Our absolute value graph, it's just po positive one, right? That's the line y equals x. If I ask you for the absolute value of 2, it's 2. The absolute value of pi is pi. The absolute value of 5 is 5. Nothing, nothing changes. And so what we see here is the line y equals 1. Okay, so that constant slope, the constant slope on the right side of this sort of v shape becomes the 
constant function, right? We sort of flatten out that growth, it becomes this constant function when we graph the derivative. Here's the decreasing constant rate that becomes a constant branch. Now, an interesting observation, there's a big old break in this graph, right? There's a big old jump. That's this sharp corner where the function is not differentiable, okay? The absolute value function is not differentiable at x equals zero. The tangent line is not well-defined. There is not just one slope of the curve at that point. That's, uh, that's a place where this function is not differentiable. Okay, that was more than you wanted to know. And yet, not more than I wanted to say. What a time. All right, and then at long last, all right, get out of here, toasted marshmallow. Let's bring out graph C and graph coconut. Ah, there they go. Did I tell you that I named these graphs after jelly bean flavors? I didn't want to just have, I mean, what was going to happen in my head is that I was going to label the blue ones A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then label the red ones 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and you are going to figure it out real quick that 1A, 2B, 3C. I had a package of jelly beans on my desk, and so I used jelly bean flavors instead of numbers. I do not have a package of jelly beans on my desk anymore because I ate them all. Okay, all right. I really love this example. So here's a graph that might look familiar to you as a little trigonometric function. If it doesn't, no worries. All right, so let's let's identify our flat spots, our peaks and troughs, our places where the tangent line is horizontal. We know each of those places, each of those x values needs to correspond to a zero in the derivative. I guess I, I could be uh, I could be slightly more precise, right? That where are those zeros happening? Where are those flat spots happening? We really just need to identify the x coordinates and those x coordinates should correspond to zeros in the derivative. Great. Then our, our next sort of traditional analysis would be to say, okay, that's an increasing section. So that needs to correspond to a positive uh, above the x-axis portion of the graph. Then our function is decreasing. So that should correspond to a below the x-axis portion of the graph and so on. Okay, so that's that's one way sort of process of elimination to work our way down here. Another thing that I think is interesting to think about with this example though is um, the way the sort of periodic nature, the repetitive nature of this first graph is echoed in the graph below, right? So we see it gently curving down and then up and then down and then up and then down and then up. Well, we have to imagine the other parts. But what you see, right, is that at the same time, the slope is positive and then negative and positive and then negative, right? And our graph gets steeper and then less steep and then steeper and then less steep. And so we see this going up and then down and up and then down. Anyway. There's so much more to discuss there that we will not discuss right this minute, but um, anyway, anyway, there they are. Can I line these up correctly? Kind of greatest hits, walk through them all. That is our first sort of introduction to thinking about of uh, graphs and graphs of derivatives and just connecting a function and its derivative without the intermediary of a formula. What did you just give me? Flash drive. Why is that part of this video now? Oh. If you're going to bring me anything, bring me a cat. Right. Well, anyway, that's all. A bonus if you watch till the very end. Mm. Image of the world's most disgruntled cat. <laughs>